Anne, is it true that you came to this world all by yourself? You must have been very lonely before you met up with us. Oh, you don't have to worry about me. I'm used to being alone. That's how I lived back on the plains. Back on the plains? But I thought you were from a noble family. Only technically. My mother was from a noble family, but not my father. He was the son of a Lorca chieftain, a nomad. My parents eloped in secret, and I was raised as a simple plains dweller. Did you have any idea who you were? Or who your mother was? No, my parents were killed by a group of bandits before they could tell me. After that, the Lorca scattered. And I, well, I just lived on my own. How terrible! I'm sorry for bringing all this up. It's okay. It happened a long time ago. But I think it explains a lot. You mean, why I don't act like an average member of the noble class? Oh no, that's not what I meant at all. It explains your strength, your compassion. You're so, I don't know, true to yourself. Me? I'm always worried about acting like a proper princess or big sister. So I'm constantly second-guessing myself and making mistakes. I understand. I was a bit bewildered to learn about my family's... history. Suddenly, I was part of the nobility. It made me question everything. You were worried about the same things as me? I was, at first. Then, on my travels, I met some very dear friends. A reliable tactician, an interesting pair of knights, and a Pegasus knight as well. <laughs> they called themselves Lindus's Legion. I realized that those friendships define me more than any noble bloodline. Interesting. It's funny. Just like you have your friends from the Legion, I have all of you. So maybe I should worry less about being a princess and more about being a friend. Agreed. Things like social status shouldn't matter when among friends. We risk our lives for each other after all. That's true. I guess I've been pretty foolish all this time. Not at all. In fact, you're one of the most genuine people I know. You're also one of the biggest worriers I know. And I love you for that. Thank you, Lynn. Well, I'll try not to worry quite so much about all this. Good. You shouldn't. But if you do, you'll still have my friendship. I hope you don't mind me saying, Lynn, but your sword technique is a bit odd. In what way? I've never seen movements like yours. They're close to Hoshiden. This style is common among the people of the plains. That's where I'm from. My father was chief of the Lorca tribe. You've lived your whole life on the plains? That's right. Some call us nomads because of all the traveling we do. What do you do with your houses? We don't need any. Instead, we carry these big tents called yurts. We move with the seasons in search of water, food, and shelter. I can't even imagine living like that. So what are the plains like? How expansive are they? They're easily the largest on the continent. The sky is a great big canopy, and a sea of grass stretches as far as you can see. It really goes on that far? Oh, it sounds like an amazing sight. It really is. I wish I could show you. The grass is so soft you don't need a pillow, and your horse can run forever. I wouldn't trade the sense of being one with the land for anything. It sounds amazing. Just hearing how you talk about it is making me misty-eyed. Even if it's just a glance, I would love to see the plains you call home. I lived in a tower for as long as I can remember. I was never able to enjoy wide open spaces or nature. You couldn't leave? Ever? That's right. It's why I try to experience so much of the outside world now. Unbelievable! I would go stir-crazy being cooped up like that. My Norian siblings were with me, so it wasn't all bad. It wasn't too lonely, and I didn't want for much. It was a good life. And besides, now I get to experience everything for the first time. That's kind of a gift, right? It's good to be optimistic, but I worry you're a bit too accepting. Oh, I don't know about that. I just make do with what I have. When this war is over, I'm taking you to see the planes. That's final. You of all people should get to see their beauty firsthand. You'll really take me? I am so excited to see them. We'll have to work out how, but there must be some way, right? You're right. If we put our heads together, we can figure it out. Let's work together to find a way. 
By Mother Earth and Father Sky, we will make it happen. Takumi, what was that? You were out of control in that battle. You again? Look, stop worrying about me, okay? I have to test myself in battle to get stronger. There's no other way. But if you die, it'll all be for nothing, won't it? Won't you think of your family, if not the greater good? Trust me, all I do is think of my family. I need to earn my siblings' respect. I'd rather die than show any weakness in front of them. Are you serious? Uh, yes. What's your point? What could make you think your family expects that of you? Well, where should I start? No, I don't believe you. I've met Ryoma and the others. They would grieve terribly if you were wounded or killed. Nah, they'd still have Corin. They like her better anyway. That isn't true at all. There's only one Takumi. You're irreplaceable. What if Ryoma died? Don't you think your other siblings would care? Of course. No one can replace Ryoma. So why don't you believe Ryoma feels the same way about you? Because I'm weak. First, you're not weak. Second, what does that have to do with anything? Let me tell you a story about my good friend, Florina. She's a Pegasus Knight, but not a very capable one if I'm honest. She was assigned to protect me, but it usually works out the other way around. So you have a weak, useless protector. Doesn't that bother you? Of course not. She's one of my closest friends in the world. And her strength, or lack of it, has nothing to do with that. Or take Sakura. She's much weaker than you. Do you not care about her? No, I'd do anything for her. That's how I know Ryoma, Hinoka, and Korin feel the same way about you. You may have a point. Even though you're incredibly annoying, I... I suppose I have some thinking to do. Good for you, Takumi. I was really worried about you. Believe it or not, there are other people who care about you too. If you're saying what I think you're saying, then thanks for protecting me. But I won't need protecting forever. Just watch. Soon I'll be strong enough to protect you and everyone else. Hey, I look forward to it. Hmm. Lindas? Is there something on my face? No, sorry. I didn't mean to stare. I just think back to my friends at home every time I see you. In the world from which you came, you mean? Yes. I didn't mean to be rude staring at you. That matters not to me. Tell me about these friends of yours. Oh, they're a pair of knights. Kent and Sane in service to my house. Kent's a hard worker. He'd go to any lengths to protect me. He always stands guard personally at my tent when we camp, just to be sure. I'm impressed that you inspire such loyalty in your retainers. Would that mine would display some measure of that diligence. Sane, though, I'm a little nervous I'm not there to keep an eye on him. He's decent at heart, but he gets a little carried away with the ladies. You're saying he's a rake? <laughs> exactly. When we first met, he fell so hard for me, he forgot he was a knight. We're friends, don't get me wrong, but his runaway heart drives me crazy. You don't say. I have a retainer with the same problem. Really? When on guard, he flirts with the clerks. On patrol, he chats up milkmaids. I set him to keep the peace, and he draws complaints against the castle. Forgive me, I lost my composure momentarily. Oh, don't worry, I've been there. It's funny that we have this in common. Besides, it did me good to see you lose your temper for once. Clearly. You've lost that wistful look I first approached you about. A minor flare of temper is a small price to pay for that. You weren't worried about me, I hope. Every so often, it's plain by your face that you're longing for home. You arrived alone in this world. I cannot fault you for missing your friends. Thanks, Xander. I really appreciate the thought. I do miss my friends sometimes. But it's not like I'm alone. I've been here long enough to make new friends. In my world, my retainers are irreplaceable companions. There are times I wish I could say as much to them. I do get lonely. Me, I'm happy enough here. It's good to remember my friends from home. And when that's not enough, I have people like you to cheer me up. Friendships that reach beyond worlds. I feel them too. A word, Krom. 
You went pretty deep into the enemy lines back there, no? Did I? I lost sight of you at some point, granted, but I was in no real danger. Did you forget what you said to me after the previous battle? Lin, try not to get too far ahead of the main force. You might get hurt. Ringing any bells? I may have said something to that effect. There's no may have about it. What's with the double standard? Just because I'm a woman doesn't mean I'll drop dead from the slightest touch. I assure you, it has nothing to do with you being a woman. I just think my heavy armor gives me an advantage when fighting on the front line. All right, I get it. You think you know how strong I am just by looking at me. I swear, you're just as bad as Hector. You're making me nervous with that glare. Well, I'll make you eat those words. Consider this a challenge. Oof. I accept on these terms. If I win, I act as vanguard and you follow behind. Same for me, then. If I win, you hang back and let me charge ahead. Let's go, right now. The sooner we get this over with, the better. <sighs> You're better than I gave you credit for. <sighs> Same to you. I thought you weren't in my league. I hate to say this, but I call a draw. Next time, I'll come out on top. In your dreams. I'll work from sun up to sun down to find a way to beat you. Till then, though, how do we decide who gets to march on the front line? Oh, right. That was the point of the whole competition to begin with. Well, from all I've seen, I'm loath to stop you from leading any charge you want. Thanks, but I tied, not one. You ought to get to take the lead, too. I worry that if we both lead, we'll only get in one another's way. Hmm. What if we stick close together and dive into the fray at the same time? The two of us together would be like a hurricane sweeping across the plain. Huh. I like the sound of that. Even the most valiant warrior can be surrounded or overwhelmed when alone. I worried you would come to that fate, but I'll breathe easier if we fight as one. You're not immune either. That armor will protect you from everything. Then we agree. In which case, neither of us need restrain ourselves. Next time, let's act together as the Vanguard. The closer we get, the worse it's going to be for our enemy. Robin, are you okay after that fight? Let me take a look. I'm fine, thanks to you. You don't need to worry about me so much. Not all tacticians are helpless in battle. I've been in plenty of fights. I can take care of myself out there. I'm sorry, you're right. Force of habit, I guess. That's a pretty intense habit. You watched me like a hawk. Not a single enemy got anywhere near me. What makes you so intent on protecting me? I'm just used to fighting that way. In my home world, I always kept the tactician close and safe. You triggered my natural instinct. So you travel with a tactician in your home world too? I do, and they're every bit as brilliant as you. Actually, you have a lot in common. I'd like to meet this tactician someday if I can. I'd love to compare theories on war and tactics and devise new strategies. I'd be glad to introduce you, but I must warn you, they can be a bit aloof. I'm not even sure they would carry on a conversation with you. Ah, the strong but silent type. But you're on good terms, right? Well, sort of. They're always very quiet, even on the battlefield. Not everyone needs to talk to issue orders. I'm sorry, what? How does one order the troops without words? Good question. I can somehow always tell. It's like there's an invisible arrow. Are we talking about... telepathy? This sounds like a very advanced tactician. I couldn't tell you. What I do know is that they're still in training. How strange. Though they do sound very important to you. So you understand why I get this sudden urge to protect you. You may not like it, but protecting you will make me feel better. Something tells me you won't take no for an answer. But I can't just stand around and let others fight for me. I want to be just as good as your telepathic tactician. I'm sure you can get there. But no matter how good you get, you'll still let me protect you, right? Of course, Lynn. If it'll make you feel better, I'll rely on you from now on. Just leave it to me, Robin.
I must say, Anna, I was relieved when I saw you here. Hey, always glad to help. But what did I do this time? You were the only one I recognized when I first arrived here. I know we weren't all that close in our world, but... Oh, um, sorry, Lynn. I guess I should have told you this earlier. The Anna in your world is a different Anna. But you look exactly alike, and you're both named Anna. Sure, but there's her and there's me, and we're different people. That makes no sense. You're Anna. I know what Anna looks like. You're not from Beta? Sorry, never heard of the place. It's a port town, and Anna who looks just like you works at the inn. We didn't talk often, but I remember she was dating a pirate. An Anna with a steady job and a steady boyfriend? Huh, that's impressive. Now that I think about it, I feel like I've seen you all over. At an arena, a shop. Those must be other Annas. We're kind of all over the place. Even in this world, you can't swing a sword without hitting an Anna. How did I never notice this? We're identical, so it's hard for people to tell us apart. Happens all the time. Huh, I thought there was something funny going on. As a representative of all Annas from all worlds, I apologize for the confusion. It's okay. I guess I shouldn't have assumed you're all the same person. Besides, whatever the other Annas are like, I know you're a trusted ally. Aw, shucks. <laughs> you really think so? Yeah, you're the only one I'd call a friend. We've had each other's backs out on the battlefield all this time, right? I may work with other Annas from time to time, but you... You're unique. <laughs> you know how to make a gal smile. For the first time, I feel like someone sees the real me. We've turned into a pretty close team, haven't we? I've never had a friend quite like you. I'll cherish this forever, Lynn. I'm glad you feel that way. So let's rely on each other out there, okay? Together, we'll give our enemies a grade A butt kicking, free of charge. You're a model prince, Marth. You'd look good on a white steed. What makes you say that? You have a very noble air about you. It makes for a great leader. I'm a noblewoman, but I was raised on the plains, the opposite of in a castle. So I feel like the way I act can be unrefined, I guess. Acting noble all the time isn't all it's cracked up to be. Don't worry too much. You have your own qualities that make you a fine leader. Aw, oh, you're just saying that to be nice. I mean it. You have amazing strength, and you care deeply for those you protect. Such traits are noble in their own right, and more important than manners. Thanks, Marth. That means a lot coming from you. Your father was a respected chief, right? I'm sure you inherited some of his traits. I'd like to think so. Too bad I didn't get any of my mother's beauty and grace. I think you have your own type of beauty and grace. It's just less traditional. Your blade work reminds me of a dance or a wind sweeping across the plains. <sighs> I'm sorry if I said something to upset you. No, it's fine. What you said threw me a little, that's all. I have a friend who once told me that same thing. So I'm not the only one who sees it. Is this friend from your world? Yes, his name is Elawood. He's a noble with real compassion for his people. He's always been there for me, through thick and thin. I owe him so much. I used to hate nobles, but that all changed when I met him. He must have recognized your good qualities the moment he met you. Those feelings grow along with the bond between friends. Elawood and I both immediately realized how important you would be. Okay, you're making me blush. It's easy for me to see why so many people follow you too, you know. So that said, would you mind being my mentor? I feel as though I must learn to act more nobly. And I want to wield my sword for others, not just myself, like you. Hmm, a fair request. But let's make a deal. I'll mentor you if you mentor me. Your swordplay is strong and flexible and I admire your free, tenacious style. So we'll both be mentor and mentee. I like the sound of that. We'll fight, learn, and grow together. I look forward to it, Lynn. Hey, Lynn. What are you looking up at the sky for? Is someone coming? No, I was just thinking about the planes. Oh, do you want a ride? I can take you there, no problem. 
Thanks, but I doubt even you could fly that far. I was thinking of the planes where I grew up, back in my home world. Oh, yeah. I can't fly you all the way there. Sorry. It was sweet of you to have authored. You're very generous. Aw, oh, thanks. Coming from you, that means a lot. Pardon my asking, but you're a manikeet, right? We have dragonkind in my world, too, but they're a little different. You have manikeets, too? I wonder if we're related. What are they like? I only know two of them. A brother and sister named Nils and Ninian. They could transform into ice dragons and do a few other things, too. I owe them both a great debt. They helped me out of a lot of tight spots. Did they use dragon stones to transform? Because I need a dragon stone to transform, you know? I believe they did. Nils mentioned that once, I think. Maybe you really are related. That would be so cool. I wish I could meet them somehow. I mean, I have friends here, but I don't know any other manikeets. And we live for so long, it can get lonely after a while. I hadn't thought about that. You'll outlive all of your human friends. I can see why you'd want a friend who will live as long as you. Maybe I can figure out some way to introduce you. Yay! I'll do anything to meet more manikeets. What we need is a way for you to come visit my world. I'd be really excited to see you too, Lin. Maybe I could even use my manikeet power to help you somehow. <laughs> You've already been a big help, Tiki. Uh, it's nothing. I'd do anything for you, and I'd bet you'd do the same for me. You've got that right. Thanks for being my friend. Hey, Salika. I notice you still seem a little shy around me. Why is that? I do? Oh, pardon me then. I don't mean to come across that way. I saw you were bored, but you didn't call me over. I wanted to say I wouldn't mind. That's kind of you. But I wouldn't want to be a bother. Isn't that what friends are for? Though maybe a princess isn't used to that. Oh no, I had many friends in my village and at the Priory. Besides, a princess I may be, but you are nobility yourself, aren't you, Lindis? By blood, maybe. But I grew up on the plains. Lady never sat right with me. I too spent most of my life outside of a castle. The Priory was my home. Huh, I didn't know that. I guess we're not so different then. Hmm. But you were raised not knowing that you were of noble blood, right? Whereas I knew from the start. And you still didn't go back home? It would have meant my life. I only left the castle with another's aid. Afterward, there was a coup. All royals besides me were put to death. That's what being royalty has meant for me. A princess's reward for surviving an assassination is nothing but open war. I can sympathize, believe it or not. My family were also slaughtered. But once I found out about my heritage, things improved. I met my grandfather, and I made a lot of friends. All in all, my life hasn't been so bad. Surely you have someone to live for, too. Yes. Yes, I suppose I do. Just think, if you hadn't been born a princess, you might never have met them. So don't be too quick to diminish your bloodline. You're right. Whether I'm a noble or just plains folk, family is family. The important thing is what you can do for the people who matter. Thank you, Lindis. I see now that I was being a tad selfish, and that self-pity may have brought grief to those important to me. I should have seen the proper behavior from the start. I vow to accept what I am, and to consider what I can do for those I love. I would include you among them, Lindis. Hey, the feeling's mutual. I already feel like we're fast friends. And friends don't worry about bothering each other when they're bored. <laughs> Point taken. Thank you, Lindis.